In row six here, we'd like to calculate the percent of increase. Now we could do this for either sales or overhead or profits, the data we see in rows two, three, and four. So maybe that heading we might consider changing at some point, but let's talk initially about the concept. We're trying to show what has changed from month to month. Now in January, we have no previous entry. So actually there's nothing to put in the cell for January here in cell B6. But starting in February, we want to either be comparing these two sales numbers or these two overhead numbers, possibly the two profit numbers. Let's suppose we're working with profits here. We want to show the percent of increase. We grew from 20 to 30. What's the percent? Now, maybe this recalls fond memories of high school math, and maybe you remember how to do this, maybe you don't, but the formula we can approach in a couple of different ways might begin with the idea that we need to calculate the difference first. So a standard way to calculate a percent of increase is to begin our formula as always with the equal sign and then subtract these two entries. The later entry, C4 minus the earlier entry, B4. Remember, you can click those cells or type them. So we want to subtract these and then divide by the starting entry. Now, some of you may know that the answer here should be 50% or 0.5, something along those lines. But when we press enter here, it's obviously not correct. 29, 29 what? And it brings out something real basic in Excel when you work with formulas. There's something called the order precedent or the rules of precedence. In Excel, when you write formulas, Excel looks at the operators, in other words, the minus, the division sign, the asterisk for multiplication, the plus for division. And it goes by what we call a hierarchy or an order of precedence. And over in column A, I put these here for reference. And you may not know what all of them mean, particularly this one here, which we'll mention in a bit. But in Excel, if you don't have anything special, and we haven't put anything special just yet, Excel analyzes the formula Imagine it looking at that list in column A. The first symbol that it sees there that's in the formula is the division. So it actually calculates this first. And that, of course, is equal to 1. What's C4 minus 1? Well, it's 29. That's why we get this answer. What is it we really want to do first? We want to do the subtraction. And so by putting in parentheses the first portion of this formula this way, now when Excel sees this formula, it looks at its order of hierarchy here. It's going to do what's within the parentheses first, and then it's going to do the division. And here's the answer that probably you would have been hoping for. And it might not quite be in the format that you had hoped, but that is a correct answer. And if we do want to display this as a percent, we'll use on the home tab in the number group, the percent symbol right here. And that's probably the way most of us would want to display this. Now, the label says percent increase, which wouldn't be quite correct because maybe some of these are going to decrease. So you might consider changing that, for example, to percent change or profit change, something like that, percent profit change. Now, do we want to do the same kind of thing in adjacent cells? Yes. Remember, what we're doing here in, in cell C6 is calculating the relationship between those two cells. And sure enough, in this cell right here, we want to be doing the same kind of calculation with these two cells. So we simply, going back to cell C6, we'll drag that fill handle in the lower right-hand corner into these cells to begin analyzing the other data. And let's say in, within this first six months, it's quite erratic. We grew by 50%, then by two-thirds, 67%. Then it went flat, then it grew by 30%. Then it grew by 23%. And by the way, if some of these numbers go negative, you'll have to use other techniques to figure out a better way to display these. But these are the kinds of calculations that sometimes you just have to more or less figure out on your own. If you go to an Excel manual and look up percent of increase, you probably will not find that. It might turn up in an example here or there. So using the symbols that we use in math, the plus and minus, the asterisk and slash, and the parentheses, that takes care of most formula issues. And many, many times when you see a formula and you know the answer is wrong, first thing to look for most times are the parentheses lacking or the parentheses not visible. You forgot to put them in. 
The caret symbol some of you might use occasionally is for raising a number to a power. For example, if I need to know what 20 squared is, I see the 20 up there, equal the cell caret 2. That raises it to the second power or squares it. 3 would cube it and so on. But we have the components of very sophisticated and lengthy formulas when needed with these symbols here. And of course, many, many times our formulas are much more direct and straightforward as we see them here. But a percent increase, percent change, a standard kind of calculation, pretty easy to achieve ultimately in Excel.